Okay, today we're going to work on the Unit 4 review for our upcoming test. Um, how do you use this video? You should, you should follow along with me in the review packet that I've given you in class. Um, once you have that packet out, you'll locate the examples that I'm working inside that packet. Um, I'll be doing some of the exact same problems along with you in this video. Follow along as I work them out. Um, you may try to work ahead of me and then, and then take a moment if you get stuck and watch the video and pause and work and pause and work as you go along. Um, once you get these examples worked um, with me and you make sure that you got them right, um, you can use the examples to answer the other questions in the packet that are going to be very similar to these. Before the test, uh, just as a suggestion, you might want to go through and review the examples in the video and be prepared to answer any or be prepared to ask any questions in class about problems that you're having trouble with. Um, anything that might have you confused or a little uh, issue that you seem to be running into. Um, make sure to ask questions before you come to class. We'll have a brief period before the test uh, and I stress the word brief there. We don't have a lot of time to discuss but it's good to have questions prepared before you come in and, and we can get everything straight as quickly as possible. Okay, um, jumping in, we're going to look at one of the first uh, problems in your packet that asks us to write the polynomial equation of least degree that has the following roots. Now, you may remember seeing some of these problems before. Um, when we are given the roots, we can use what we call the factor theorem. Um, to come up with the factors for that polynomial. So if these are the roots here, we should be able to come up with factors that go along with that that would give us those roots. So the factors that would go for uh, giving a root of negative 2 would be x plus 2. The factor that would create a, uh, negative 3i as an answer would be x plus 3i and the factor that would create positive 3i as a root or an answer would be x minus 3i. Now, to come up with the equation that's going to uh, be based on those roots, we need to set this as an equation. So we'll set that equal to 0, and that would create those factors, uh, or the, that would lead those factors to create those roots. Um, once we have that, we're going to multiply these factors out and get the actual equation that uh, these factors form. Um, anytime we have conjugates, as we do here with these two values, um, you may remember working with conjugates in the last unit, unit three, um, whenever we see conjugates, um, we want to multiply those out first because they work uh, much easier that way once we combine them in, by multiplying. So we'll multiply these two first and we get x times x is x squared. Um, x times minus 3i would be minus 3ix, and then we get 3i times x would be positive 3ix, and then we multiply 3i times negative 3i would be negative 9i squared. And hopefully you remember a little bit about i squared. We know that i squared turns to negative 1, so in effect that's going to make this negative 9i squared turn to plus 9. So we'll uh, now collect like terms there. Um, these two values are going to cancel out, and we are left with excuse me, x squared plus 9. And we're going to take that x squared plus 9, and we're going to multiply the other factor, the x plus 2, and that will give us our actual equation. So we say x times x squared would be x to the third, x times 9 would be 9x, 2 times x squared would be 2x squared, and 2 times 9 would be 18. So um, the only thing left to do now is rearrange this into proper order. So our actual equation would be x to the third plus, um, excuse me, plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18 equals 0. This is the answer to our question. That's what we're looking for. 
make sure you always put the equal zero because again, it did ask for an equation. So that must mean that it has to be equal to something. And based on the factor theorem, it should be equal to zero. Um, <clears throat> moving along to the next problem, we're asked to identify all the possible rational roots of this polynomial function. Uh, remember, we're just listing off possible rational values that could end up being zeros for the polynomial function um, anywhere uh, where it might cross the x-axis. Now, we've talked about how to find that in multiple ways, but um, this is uh, basically just working with the first and last term. So we'll take the factors of our last term, the 24, and we'll list those off. Uh, the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. We will divide those factors by the factors of our lead coefficient, which is 3. So, um, of course, those factors are positive, negative 1, and 3. Now, we don't want to leave the answer like that because that's not really a number value. This is just kind of uh, setting things up for us to work with. Um, so what this is going to be is positive or negative, um, 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 4 over 1, 6 over 1, 8 over 1, 12 over 1, and 24 over 1. Now obviously anything over 1 is going to be the whole number that it was. Um, now we need to divide each of them by 3. So we'll have 1 divided by 3, or 1 third, 2 over 3, 3 over 3 is actually 1. So we have that in our list right there, so we'll, we're good with that. 4 over 3 would be the next value, then 6 over 3, well 6 over 3 simplifies to be 2, and we have that already, so we don't need to do that. 8 over 3. Um, 12 over 3 simplifies to be 4, and then 24 over 3 simplifies to be 8. So um, this is your list of possible rational roots for the polynomial function that we've been given. Um, again, are all those going to work? Obviously not. That's a lot of answers there, and we are only going to have four answers to this problem. But um, we would begin with these to start testing out values to see what might make a zero in this problem and we'll look at how we do that in just a moment. But this is all we need as our answer when we list off the possible rational roots for the polynomial function. Okay, that's two quick problems. Now let's look at a, a little bit more complicated problem. We've, uh, we've been given one of the roots to this polynomial equation and we want to find the remaining roots. Well, we know that this is a third degree polynomial because we have an x to the third, so we should expect three total roots. Now, how do we find those roots? Well, we're going to take one of the roots that we've been given, we're very fortunate to have that root, and we will remove that from the polynomial equation uh, or factor that out of the polynomial equation and work with a depressed polynomial. And we do that by uh, dividing out, we'll use a synthetic method here, uh, we'll divide 2 out of 3, negative 10, 10, negative 4, which are the coefficients of our, our different levels of x, and <coughs> we bring down the first value, which is 3, and then we multiply, 2 times 3 is 6, and then we add negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. And we multiply. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. We'll add again. 10 plus negative 8 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. Well, 4 and negative 4 combine to make 0. And we should be getting a 0 here because that means that it divides evenly and it doesn't have a remainder. And because it is a root that we were working with, this is something that we should expect. Um, if you're not getting zero for your last value when you divide synthetically, 
um, you're doing something wrong. You're either dividing wrong or you're using a number that is not a root. So um, we've got that here and we're going to continue along now. We're going to take 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 and we're going to use that to find the remaining um, factors or the remaining roots for this problem. And again, the 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 is what we call a depressed polynomial. Uh, it's depressed because we have removed one of the roots from the original polynomial and we have something that's smaller or a lower degree polynomial left over. Um, <clears throat> we next would try to factor this out. Um, in this particular case, you may already realize that 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 does not factor evenly. So we've got to find some other method of getting those roots from this. And what we'll do is we will use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula again is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, we're going to use that to find our remaining roots. So negative b in this case would be negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2. Now going through all of that, we divide that by 2 times a, which is 3. And we're going to need to now simplify all of this information to find our remaining answer. So negative negative 4 would be 4 plus or minus the square root of, that's going to be 16 minus 4 times 3 times 2 would be minus 24. Uh-oh, I'm seeing a negative there. And uh, 2 times 3 would be 6. So going further, we get 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 all over 6. Now, um, we don't like to work with the square root of negatives, but uh, sometimes we have to, and you'll remember that that leads to imaginary values. So what are we going to get out of this? Well, we first off need to break down that square root of 8. Um, it breaks down into, uh, we'll break it into negative 4 and 2. Something we can take the square root of and something we can't. So um, when we go do that, um, it's going to give us, and I'm sorry I'm running out of room here, so um, it's going to give us 4 plus or minus 2i, which is the square root of negative 4, square root of 2, all over 6. Now there is something that goes into all of those terms. Uh, remember, we want to pull out what we can so we can work with these values. 4 and 2 and 6 all have a common factor, so we'll factor that out and we'll get 2 plus or minus i square root of 2 all over 3. And we got that by dividing everything there by 2. So our roots, our final answer for this problem would be 2, which was given to us initially, and then 2 plus i square root of 2 all over 3, and then 2 minus i square root of 2 all over 3. Those are your three roots to this polynomial. And again, what we did was we took our original root out, got a depressed polynomial, and then used the quadratic formula to get the remaining roots. Okay, let's take a look at the, uh, the next problem, which is asking us to find all of the roots of the given polynomial equation. We haven't been given anything here, so um, what we're going to have to do is start from scratch and then find the roots to this problem. Now what we're going to start off with when we do this is just listing out all of our possible values or our possible rational values for uh, zeros. And this is very similar to what we did earlier uh, and back in one of the earlier examples. We're going to take the factors of our last term, our constant term, and divide them by the factors of our lead coefficient. So um, the factors of 45 would be positive negative 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, and 45. Uh, for us, in this case, our lead coefficient is 1, so we don't have a lot to divide by there. So we've basically um, said that our possibles are going to be positive or negative 1, 
3, 5, 9, 15, and 45. And <clears throat> we're going to just start testing those numbers. Now, um, say for instance, you just want to test out uh, 1, for instance. Um, you would put um, 1 um, x to the third minus, or excuse me, 1 is x, excuse me, we're plugging 1 in. So we've got 1 to the third minus 5 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 minus 45. And we want to see, does that equal 0? And um, the, real quickly, we get 1 minus 5, that would be uh, negative 4 plus 9 would be 5 minus 45 is negative 40. So this is no good. That does not work. Um, it does not equal 0. So <clears throat> we're going to try the next number, which would be 3. Um, 3 to the third uh, minus 5. I guess I'll get the same color right. Um, 3 to the third minus 5 times 3 to the second plus 9 times 3 minus 45. What would that give us? Well, we're looking for 0, but I don't think it gives us that. Uh, this would be 27 minus 5 times 9. That's 45. 27 minus 45 would be negative 18. Plus 27 would make positive 9. Minus 45, uh, I believe that comes out to be negative 36, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, it's not 0, and we don't want that. So um, we're going to keep trying, I guess, and, and we'll try 5 at this time. And what we get is 5 to the third minus 5 times 5 to the second plus 9 times 5. This is actually looking pretty good. Minus 45. Well, 5 to the third is 125 minus 5 times 25 would be another 125. So that's 125 minus 125. That's 0, plus 9 times 5 is 45, minus 45 again. This does equal 0, so this is good for us. We've identified 5 as one of our roots. Now, we've also talked that you could quickly do this on the calculator if you ran into some issues um, with, with finding a value. You could just quickly graph that, that equation. I went on ahead and, and typed this into the y equals screen, and when we graph that out, you can see um, that this graph, and, it, and you can see the graph is not really on there a whole lot, but you can see part of the graph is showing that it's actually hitting um, the x-axis at positive 5. So that would be a, a value that would be considered. We need to test it out, of course, because the calculator is not always 100% accurate with its graphics. But um, 5 is definitely a value we want to try. Well, we tried it here, and we see that it's 0, so that's great. So we'll go ahead and jump in, and we'll take that 5 out um, by doing synthetic division. So we've got 5, and we're going to divide that into our original polynomial. Um, the coefficients would be 1, negative 5, 9, and then negative 45. Um, we'll quickly divide that, bring down your 1. Um, 5 times 1 is 5. We add and get 0. 5 times 0 is 0. We add and get 9. 5 times 9 is 45. And like I said earlier, you want a remainder of 0 here uh, because that's telling us that we do have, in fact, a root to this equation. So uh, what we're left with is the polynomial x to the second plus, and you can put the 0x if you like, uh, plus 9. We wouldn't want to leave the 0x in our final answer there, but for right now, that's fine to leave there to help you think. Um, so we want to either factor this or we want to use the quadratic equation. Well, unfortunately, there's no factors of 9 that will add to give us 0. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So that's going to give us that, uh, using that quadratic formula, we would have negative b, which would be negative 0, which is 0 plus or minus square root of 0 squared 
minus 4 times 1 times 9, all divided by 2 times 1. And hopefully you're just aware of where I'm getting all those values. That's A, B, and C being plugged into the formula that we already know. Um, that's going to equal 0 plus or minus the square root of uh, 0 minus 36 would be negative 36 all over 2. Well, hopefully you can uh, figure out the square root of negative 36 uh, by this point. We should know that that is 6i all over 2. Well, 0 plus 6i and 0 minus 6i are both uh, positive or negative 6i. So we've got positive or negative 6i over 2. Well, that simplifies to be positive or negative 3i. So that's two roots there, and of course we found the five. We were originally dealing with a third degree polynomial, which tells us that we should have three roots. Um, so it's a, a cubic polynomial, and it's going to have three roots. So our roots, and I'll write them here at the bottom, roots were five, which we found first, and then we had three i, and we had negative three i, those are our three solutions or roots to this polynomial equation. All right, let's move to our last example um, where we're doing uh, polynomial regression. Uh, we're going to find the polynomial uh, that fits this data. We've collected some data on population of a, a small uh, town over a year, starting with 1960 and then going all the way up to 2010, and, and uh, we want to find the polynomial uh, that's going to best fit that, that data. So what we'll do is we will uh, start off by finding the degree. Well, we've talked about this uh, method in class, and what we'll do to do find the degree is start off by finding our finite differences. So we'll start off with the first differences. Um, We'll subtract 5185 minus 4267. Um, that is 918. Then we'll subtract 6166 minus 5185. That gives us 981. Those are looking pretty close to each other. Um, then we subtract 7830 minus 6166. That is 1664. So we're getting bigger with our differences. Um, 10,812. Minus 7830 is 2982. And then we subtract 15,735 minus 10,812. And that is, um, that gives us 4,923. So those are our differences between those values. Um, obviously, these are not the same. I mean, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead now and do the second differences which would be the differences between these first differences. So we say 981 minus 918, that's 63. 1664 minus 981 is 683. 2982 minus 1664 is 1,318. And then 4,923 minus 2982 is, um, I believe that is 19,000 or 1,941. Yes, that's correct, 1941. So um, we still don't have the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our third differences and see if we can locate something there. 683 minus 63 is 620. 1318 minus 683 is 635. And 1941 minus 1318 is going to be um, 623. Excuse me. 623. So um, these are not the same, but these would also be what we consider very close. To being same and a lot of times in problems where we've just got data that we collected uh, in the from the real world um, 
they don't necessarily always work out perfectly. So we're going to try and find the one that best fits the data. And because we're just trying to find something that best fits, I believe that we're going to go with the third differences here. Now, sometimes in some problems we'll work out, it'll work out perfectly where these values are all exactly the same. But these are very close to being the same. So we're going to say that this is a third degree polynomial. It's probably going to fit this best and it would be what we call a cubic polynomial. So our next task is to write the polynomial function that best fits that data. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is address the fact that we're dealing with years. And we remember we talked about in an earlier video and in class that when we deal in uh, interval time measurements for our x coordinate, we're gonna to wanna to make an adjustment and we'll count our first measurement as zero because that's our starting point. Um, subsequently, our next value, 1970, if 1960 is going to be zero, 1970 would be 10, and 1980 then must be 20, and 1990 would be 30, and 2000 would be 40, and 2010 must be 50. So we'll use those values to represent um, are years rather than typing in 1960, 1970, 1980, and so on, because those values really don't mean anything numerically. They're just numbers that we've assigned to years. So um, we're gonna jump in, pull out our calculator, and type that data in. Now you'll see that when I press stat edit, I've already taken a moment here and put that data in. Um, these are our years for 1960 through uh, 2010, and then we have the uh, population for the village or the town in each of those uh, values in the list too. So um, going back we've discovered that we had a cubic polynomial or we wanted to use a cubic polynomial to fit this data so we're now going to do the cubic regression by pressing stat going over to the calc menu and selecting cubic regression from the list, which is option six. You can just press six if you need to. Um, so we choose cubic regression. We've got our data, it comes from list one for our x values. Uh, we'll use list two for our y values. And we'll tell the calculator to store the regression equation in y1. So we've got all this. We tell the calculator to go ahead and do that. And we can see we have our equation now. So we're just gonna take that information over to our our question where we write out our answer um, we'll write that out using those values our fu polynomial function that best fits the data would be the f of x is equal to 0 0.105 x to the third and again that's a on your calculator screen minus 2.839 x x squared, and you'll notice that I'm rounding these off to, to three decimal places, or the thousandth place, plus 109.834x plus 4266.786. That is our polynomial function that can be used to describe this data. Now, the reason why we like having that function is we can use it to make predictions about other things. For example, the year 2015 is not included in that data, but we can easily uh, find out or make a prediction on what that data should be for 2015 by plugging the value for 2015 into that equation. So first off, we need to decide what 2015 should be. Um, we don't plug the number 2015 in because that would be insanely large, but we're going to keep in mind that if uh, 1960 was zero and 2010 was 50, uh, 2015 should be 55. So we're gonna plug 55 into the equation and we can easily do that with our calculator. Um, by the way, notice that our square there was almost one. It was 0 .999, 9999, and, and that's really good. So um, that, that tells you that our data is fitting really closely here. But um, we can go to our calculator, 
tell it to take the equation that we put in y1, which is the data that we just found, and plug 15 in, or was it 15? No, it wasn't, it was 55. Plug 55 in, and that will give us the value of 19,121, approximately. And that is what we would predict the population to be in 2015. 19,121. And that would be a prediction based off of our equation. Okay, hopefully you've got a little bit from this. Um, again, you do have other practice, uh, other practice problems to work with in your packet. These should get you started though. Uh, so practice and prepare for your test by doing those remaining problems. Good luck on the test and have a good day.